Hello and welcome to the Go Development Studio introductory video. This presentation is designed for those considering using the Go Enterprise Mobility Platform to build and deploy apps. The benefits of using Go Development Studio are simple, speed and cost. It enables you to build mobile applications in less time and for a lower cost than traditional approaches. No need for multiple teams of developers specializing in each mobile platform. No need to learn a new API and no need to learn a new programming language. It supports codeless development and it's a build once deploy anywhere technology which means your development teams spend more time writing functional code and less time tailoring their apps to suit the individual characteristics of each mobile platform. It supports integration with any back-end system and provides rapid app deployment to users. It's a codeless drag and drop environment that facilitates the rapid development of multi-platform mobile apps. This results in a shallow learning curve requiring only a modest amount of effort to become proficient enough to develop fully functional mobile apps. It's also a true build once deploy anywhere technology that supports all of the major mobile platforms. The key to its power is the simplicity with which you can build apps that integrate into yours or AN others backend data systems. For example, connectivity into legacy data systems is fully supported using one of our pre-built data connectors. These support seamless connectivity into SQL, Oracle, MySQL or ODBC databases, as well as connectivity into SOAP and RESTful web services or RSS feeds. It's also rapid. It's not only rapid to build apps that run across all major mobile platforms, it's rapid to deploy the resulting app into the enterprise. Instead of taking days or weeks to deploy your app to your users, we talk in terms of minutes. This demonstration is going to take approximately five minutes and when it's finished it will run across all major mobile platforms. So let's get started. First step, go into the project settings. I'm going to assign an icon to our app. In this example I'm using one of the pre-built icons that comes as part of Go Development Studio. Could easily import your own PNG file and let Development Studio take care of the sizing so that it runs across all platforms. So there's the app that will be displayed within the container when it runs and then there's the title, we'll leave that as it is. So the icon plus the title of what you'll see within the container when it starts up. Let's define the back-end data connectivity. Right mouse click, add data method starts the data creation wizard. Let's call it RSS feed. Click on the connection string. Let's tell it what type of connection it's going to be. Look, we have a selection here of different types of connectivities. So SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, and so on. Um, SOAP and REST web services. In this example, RSS feed. Cut and paste the URL to my uh, RSS feed in there. And I'm going to accept the defaults for the remainder of the wizard. Now we define the backend connectivity. Let's define what's being displayed on the screen in a list. To show information in a list format, we use a repeater component. If I click on the triangle up here, I can set the properties. There are two key properties, data source and the row template. Data source defines where the data is coming from, so it by makes a connection between the, the component and the backend uh, data system. So I've defined that. Now I need to define how we're going to show this information on the screen, what format it's going to take. To do that we use templates. You can define your own templates um, using the new template feature. I've just got a simple three row template. At the top I'm going to find the title. Middle I'm going to bind the description and bottom define the link. I can even change the, the font and layout um, so regular, I'm going to make that bold, and I'm also going to make the font size large for the title, and for the link, I'm going to change the color to long green. Okay. Uh, one final thing we need to do within the row template is define a response to touch on the screen. We can define a, a response to a tap on the screen or a swipe using either of these two properties. I'm going to use tap 
I'm going to add an action. So I'm going to carry out an action in response to a tap on the screen. I'm going to open a web page. Open web page takes a single parameter. That's the URL of the web page that you want to open. I'm going to bind that to the link. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go and change the properties for the page. So RSS feed is the title. And then I'm going to compile and deploy my Go app to my Go Enterprise server. Successful. So let's display the emulator. This is the Windows Phone emulator and you can see we've got the client running and within that we've got an eye indicating that an update has been deployed. And then Click that and you can see there's the icon we defined, there's the title, let's select it, there's the heading RSS feed that we defined in the text property and then that's the RSS feed displayed as a list broken down into three rows so we've got the title, description and then link. Let's click on this link and there you have link through to the web page. And that concludes our demonstration in under five minutes we've built a Go app that runs successfully across all major mobile platforms, connects into a back-end data system and responds to user touch.